SpaceX embarked on another critical test flight for its massive Starship system on May 27, 2025. Known as Starship Flight 9, this uncrewed mission aimed to push the boundaries of the launch vehicle further than ever before. The primary goals were ambitious, test the Starship's ability to survive re-entry, achieve a controlled landing, and deploy test payloads. This flight represented a significant step in the ongoing development of a fully reusable transportation system designed for deep space exploration. Elon Musk envisions Starship as the vehicle that will enable humanity to establish a permanent presence on the moon and eventually colonize Mars. SpaceX employs a rapid iterative testing philosophy, building, flying and often breaking hardware at an accelerated pace. Each test, whether a success or failure, provides invaluable data for design modifications and improvements. For Starship Flight 9, several specific objectives were laid out. The Super Heavy Booster, designated Booster 14, was making its first flight after being recovered and refurbished. The Starship Upper Stage, S-35, flew with approximately 100 heat shield tiles intentionally missing to test performance during re-entry. The mission also included the critical task of attempting to open the payload bay door and simulate the deployment of Starlink satellites. Earlier Starship tests had demonstrated various capabilities but also highlighted significant challenges. Flight 9 aimed to improve upon past performances, particularly in areas like stage separation, engine reliability, and the complex maneuvers required for both the booster's return and the Starship's atmospheric re-entry. The engineering teams had implemented numerous upgrades and tweaks to both the booster and the ship, hoping to overcome previous hurdles and gather more comprehensive data on the vehicle's performance envelope. The colossal Starship vehicle, comprising Booster 14 and Ship S-35, thundered to life from SpaceX's Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas. The launch occurred on May 27, 2025, around 6.36 p.m. Central Daylight Time. The moments leading up to liftoff were filled with anticipation, not just for SpaceX employees but for space enthusiasts worldwide. The countdown proceeded relatively smoothly, with a planned pause at the T-40 second mark for final system checks. A breathtaking display of power marked the beginning of the flight as all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy Booster 14 ignited almost simultaneously. The initial ascent appeared stable and controlled, with the rocket majestically clearing the launch tower and beginning its climb towards space. During the early phase of its flight, Starship successfully navigated several critical milestones, including clearing the launch infrastructure and powering through Max-Q. The performance during this initial ascent phase was largely nominal, providing engineers with crucial data on the vehicle's behavior under the immense stresses of launch. Approximately three minutes into the flight, Starship achieved a successful hot stage separation. This complex maneuver involves the Starship upper stage igniting its engines while still attached to the booster, just before the booster engines shut down and the two vehicles separate. For Flight 9, this critical step appeared to go according to plan, allowing Starship S-35 to continue its journey towards its intended suborbital trajectory. Booster 14, its primary task of propelling the upper stage completed, then began its own challenging sequence of maneuvers designed to test its return and landing capabilities. Following separation, Booster 14 performed a flip maneuver, orienting itself for a boost-back burn. The mission plan for this reused booster was different from a full return-to-launch site attempt, it was slated for a hard landing in the ocean. The booster successfully executed several planned testing milestones during this phase, providing engineers with data on its performance under extreme conditions. The re-entry phase for Booster 14 was intentionally aggressive, using a steeper-than-usual angle of attack. Unfortunately, Booster 14's mission ended prematurely and dramatically, experiencing a rapid unscheduled disassembly mid-air. While the loss of the booster was a setback, SpaceX maintained that valuable data was still collected during its flight and descent. While Booster 14 met its fiery end, Starship S-35 continued its ascent flawlessly after the hot staging separation. The six Raptor engines on the upper stage ignited as planned, pushing S-35 further and faster towards its designated suborbital trajectory. Starship S-35 managed to reach farther along its planned flight path than any previous Starship test vehicle. The spacecraft was reported to be on its designated flight path following the shutdown of its main engines. A key experimental aspect of S-35's mission was its heat shield, flying with approximately 100 heat shield tiles deliberately missing. 
Elon Musk later noted that there was no significant loss of the existing heat shield tiles during the ascent phase. Starship S-35 also incorporated several technical upgrades based on learnings from previous flights. One of the critical objectives for Starship Flight 9 was to test the payload deployment mechanism. The plan involved S-35 attempting to open its payload bay door and simulate the release of eight dummy Starlink satellites. Unfortunately, this crucial test encountered significant problems. The PEZ door failed to open as intended, marking the third consecutive Starship flight where the payload door system experienced a malfunction. As Starship S-35 continued its coast phase, another serious issue emerged, a fuel leak. A leak was detected in one of the main methane propellant tanks, leading to a gradual but critical loss of pressure within the tank. Maintaining tank pressure is essential for ensuring a steady flow of propellant to the engines, especially for the planned engine reignition sequence required for the landing maneuver. SpaceX engineers and analysts are now scrutinizing the data to understand the root causes of both the payload door jam and the fuel leak, and to devise effective solutions. Proposed solutions for the door jam involve incorporating active heaters, more powerful hydraulic cylinders, or fail-open logic. For the fuel leak, potential fixes include using a helium buffer for pressurization, adding more sophisticated leak detection sensors, and implementing heat pumps for temperature management. The combination of the methane fuel leak and the subsequent loss of main tank pressure had severe consequences for Starship S-35 as it prepared for its atmospheric re-entry. The decreasing pressure in the propellant tank likely contributed to a loss of attitude control. Without proper tank pressurization, the Raptor engines could not be reliably reignited for the planned landing burn. As a result, the critical engine reignition sequence had to be cancelled. The spacecraft began to exhibit uncontrolled rotation, a clear sign that it was no longer stable. In response to the developing crisis, flight controllers initiated an emergency venting of the remaining fuel. However, with no propulsive capability and compromised attitude control, Starship S-35 was essentially a massive, unguided object at the mercy of orbital mechanics and atmospheric drag. The lack of attitude control proved critical, and S-35 began to enter the denser layers of the atmosphere at an incorrect and likely unstable angle. The inevitable conclusion to Starship S-35's flight came approximately 46 minutes after liftoff, disintegrating at an altitude of roughly 59 kilometers. While the ship did not survive, it traveled significantly farther and endured longer than in some previous tests, providing a wealth of data before its ultimate destruction. Despite the dramatic and explosive endings for both Booster 14 and Starship S-35, SpaceX emphasized that the mission yielded a substantial amount of valuable data. While the primary objectives of demonstrating a full Starship re-entry and achieving a controlled landing were not met, the flight pushed the vehicle further than before. SpaceX spokesperson Dan Huat highlighted the importance of gathering real-world flight data, stating that such information is crucial for understanding the vehicle's performance and identifying areas for improvement. Elon Musk, true to his philosophy, publicly framed the mission as a partial success, despite the loss of both stages. He pointed to achievements such as the successful ascent, hot stage separation and Starship S-35 reaching its scheduled engine cutoff, and suborbital trajectory. SpaceX's entire Starship development program is built upon this rapid iterative approach. Build, fly, learn from failures, modify, and fly again quickly. With the data from Flight 9 now under intense review, SpaceX is already looking ahead. Future missions will continue to build upon the lessons from Flight 9, aiming to incrementally enhance the vehicle's reliability and performance with each successive test flight. Following Starship Flight 9, the FAA announced it would oversee an investigation into the anomalies. SpaceX must demonstrate to the FAA it understands the root causes of the failures and implement corrective actions. Fortunately, there were no reports of public injury or property damage from Flight 9. The booster and ship disintegrated over water in designated hazard areas. Approval for Starship Flight 10 is not automatic. The FAA must be satisfied that fixes are robust and public safety is ensured. The FAA has adapted its regulatory approach for the Starship program's iterative nature. The FAA previously granted SpaceX approval to increase annual Starship launches from 5 to 25. SpaceX must analyze data, resolve issues, and present a convincing case to the FAA before resuming its flight schedule.